Hello, I am back again with another social media for your boring business and today I'm going to be joined by Sarah uh, who I'm going to see if I can find yet but I am super excited about this guest. She has grown a big following on both Instagram and TikTok and I'm going to ask her about what is working now, um, what she is seeing, uh, and the evolution. So I'm going to message her really fast to make sure she's on her way. I do this every single Tuesday where we talk about social media for your boring business. My name is Jen. I own a social media marketing agency and I love going live with my other digital marketing friends, most of which I've actually met online. So um, drop a comment if you have met your friends online too. I feel like that's like the way to and the place to meet them whenever you are in your 30s. Um... So like I said, so we're going to be talking about the evolution of social media and the changes that we've seen on Instagram and TikTok, especially in the last two years. There has been massive changes, um, especially here on TikTok. Like I'm sure you know, if you have been creating content for TikTok, uh, then you probably have noticed a drop in views, a drop in engagement, a drop in follower increase. Like it used to be so easy to get like viral type videos or um, just like increase your followers, which I still have clients that are kind of able to do that, but it definitely is a little bit more challenging than it used to be. Um, oh, Sarah, why can't I see you? Are we not friends? Um, no. Oh, Sarah, you have to go live. <laughs> Sorry. Sarah, go live from your page and then I'll add you as a host. You don't have to put a title or anything. But, so if you're ever going live with somebody on TikTok, the easiest way to do that is um, to actually go live at the same time. And then uh, you can add people that way, and that way both of the screens are together. So you both want to be hosts um, rather than adding somebody as a guest to your live. If you add them as a guest to your live, then it becomes like a little small picture in the corner. Um, whereas if you're both hosts at the same time for the live, that's when you get the side-by-side -side picture, which is a lot easier to see uh, and talk to the person whenever... Um, whenever they are like that. So hopefully she's jumping on the live right now so that we can go ahead and get started. Um, drop any questions that you have in the comments. Um, Sarah, I still see you there. Um, drop any questions that you have in the comments about strategies that are working for TikTok. Now, um, oh, here we go. Yay, you did it. <laughs> I just thought it was like I go on yours and then I get sent a request. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, excuse my dogs. I should I have specified. Yeah, I know. I should have told you. I thought based on what you said to me, I thought I'm like, oh, maybe she does this. Maybe she's done this before or like is comfortable with it because I always have to explain to people how to do it because it's different than the other platforms because you actually no. like want to be both going live. Excuse me just a second. Um, no, I've been live, just like on my own account, but not uh, joined with anyone. Okay, excuse my dogs. All right. Okay. I'm so, so excited to get it. started. Um, so, and just to let you know, since we're both live separately, if people leave questions in your comments, I cannot see them. So just make sure okay. that you are paying attention to that so that we can answer anything. Um, okay. So I'm really excited to talk to Sarah today because... It, I know that she's been on social media for a while. She's grown a nice size following on both Instagram and TikTok. Um, and it, right now, as we know, it's really hard to do that. Um, so I would like to just talk about like the evolution of change from TikTok and Instagram from 2020 till now. I feel like we've seen some substantial changes um, even in the past, you know, three months, six months, year. Um, but I want to start off kind of like with your story. Like, how did you even start on social media? When did you start on Instagram and TikTok? Um, and it, like, how did you get from there to now? 
Um, yeah, I feel like I should be better at my dates as per when <laughs> I started, but kind of basically when I was on maternity leave, which was like 2017, but 2018, I think, because, you know, it was like halfway through the year. So like 2018 yeah. was when I like decided to go full time with my social media business. I started in the online space with a jewelry store. So it was called earrings and stuff. And so that's why I, when I started my social media, I called it social and stuff. Um, and so that's kind of like my start of, you know, creating a separate account for it. I was just kind of helping some friends out. Um, I did social media for a restaurant, which was great because I served for years. I was in the hospitality industry for like 20 years. So it was a great like first account to start with. And yeah. did some of my friends real estate and yeah, so that was kind of the start of it. And then at 20 in 2020, I officially closed my jewelry store because I just was feeling a little too scattered. And obviously with having a child and living in a 600 square foot apartment, I didn't really have the space to be making jewelry anymore. Um, so okay. yeah, that's kind of my story. And then I just went all in on my social media business, pretty much like full, full time in 2020 and then the pandemic happened and then even more people were online and that's pretty much <laughs> when I joined or I actually joined TikTok at the end of 2019 like December 2019 like I think my first post was on like New Year's Eve of like my husband and kid at the playground yeah so that's kind that's of my fun. like TikTok journey yeah okay so um, I also started my company in 2018 and I think our kids are probably around the same age. My son was born in 2016. Um, so similar. Um, and yeah. then I also like my first clients were bars and restaurants. I think those are really fun, um, social media clients, but I don't work with them anymore because managing their accounts is a lot of like, you need to be there, <laughs> I think yeah. for the best possible outcome. And that's really hard. <laughs> Yeah, but, it's definitely best to have someone in house just take it over because yeah. they can take little clips along the way. And if there's a new feature, and yeah, it's definitely more like hands on. Yeah, it's kind of the yeah. Same doing like the clothing store, I find is definitely intense as well. <laughs> yeah, I have another friend who did a clothing store and they would do lives like hours long lives every day, which I mean worked really well, right? Like their account was like super well known, but that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot. Okay. So I have some questions for you. <clears throat> so I just change my blinds. They're like blinded me. Oh, well, your lighting's really good. Mine's kind of harsh shadows, but I know. I'm just like, light. oh, there we go. Yeah. That's there we great. go. Now I, I have such sensitive eyes. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So tell us about like, you have what, like 21, 20,000 followers on Instagram. So was there like one piece of content that helped you get to that point? Was it like a certain time of year? What do you think got you from zero to 20,000? Uh, okay. So on Instagram, I am actually at 12. 12 my bad. I just yeah. switched them around in my head, but it's still, yeah. uh, I would over say, 10, yeah, no, um, I would say the main thing that like propelled me to like pass the 10 K was because of reels, because I was on TikTok earlier. So when reels came on the scene, I feel like I kind of had a little bit of an edge because I was already used to creating that style of content. So I just kind of went like all in on that. And that's kind of like what propelled me forward. Now on my account, it's like obviously follower growth has kind of slowed down a little bit like yeah has kind of slowed down but i've also been super busy with work so you know you get in what you put out <laughs> yeah yeah that you know so okay a couple of things from that the first one is like when um when reels first started i was already in social media at that point and so and i was already on tiktok so i was just like posting tiktoks onto reels which i still do and i do that because i'm lazy but mm -hmm. you do not do that you actually are creating videos specifically for reels so are you creating videos for both tiktok and reels are you creating one video and editing it on both platforms separately or like what are you doing with that strategy yeah, I know. I feel like I kind of fell off the train a little bit, to be honest. Like, I think a lot of us, like business owners do, and like all of a sudden you're busy and you're like, yeah, 
So I like I usually was trying to create for TikTok first, and then I use the repurpose.io to get rid of the watermark. Have yeah, kind of hang out in a Google Drive. But then sometimes I do create right in Instagram as well. Um, I'm trying to get back to like a consistent kind of like schedule here. So I am trying now to create because I do think that reels and TikTok do kind of have their own jam. Now. Yeah, I feel like they've kind of separated a bit. Whereas For before sure. it was just like all TikToks that was on reels. And now as annoying as it is with people being over the aesthetic of it all, that's kind of what reels are now. It's like these aesthetic quick edit videos with trending songs and text. I mean, I'm always going to push people to use their voice, but like when I'm scrolling in the reels feed, I rarely ever see a video with someone using their voice. I I know, know right? But it's just not there really. And I'm still going to push people to do that because that's kind of what will make you stand out and be unique, but it's hard to not get sucked in to be like, oh, well, what's the point? No one else is doing that. I might as well just do these quick etiquette yeah. videos. So I feel like that's something I like struggle with all the time, knowing like, do you play the game or do you not play the game? It's hard. I to know. know. Well, and so the other question that I have for you is it, do you see a substantial difference in views based on if you're creating an app versus um, repurposing? Like, and I guess what I mean by that is, so we repurpose all of our clients' videos. We don't have an Instagram like strategy separate. Um, we create and edit on TikTok and then put those videos on Facebook, Instagram, and um, YouTube Shorts. Um, and there, we still have videos that will get, you know, 10 times the amount of views than other ones. Um, some videos sit at a normal amount of views we were really popping off on Facebook reels and that was like really fun. And then, you know, yeah, like Facebook that totally reels, know, died, right? Just like, that completely think, yeah. died. Um, but so because we still have, you know, maybe like every third or every fifth video get a couple thousand views. I don't see the point in having a separate strategy for Instagram reels. So what is your take on that? Like, are you seeing a big, massive difference? Um, yes and no. I mean, I'll net, like, do you get rid of the watermark or do you just? Oh yeah. Yeah. We use repurpose.io. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it totally depends on the person. I don't see that much of a difference to make it completely separate. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I agree with that. But I mean, there are people that are on Instagram that like have their Instagram specific strategy that works really well for them, but they're yeah. probably not on TikTok. So I think yeah, it just exactly. kind of depends where you want your first platform to be, create for there and then filter it down. So I think it just depends on the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So in that just made me think of two things. Number one, I saw in your Instagram bio um, about an omnipresence, which is really like what we do. Um, And that's why, like I said, we put it on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube shorts, because our point is to gather the most amount of reach and views across platforms rather than putting all of our eggs in one basket and hoping for the best. So what are your thoughts and strategy on that? Yeah, like I'm all about that as well. (laughs) It's like we all these platforms allow us to publish that style of content. So it's like, why would we not publish it there? Yeah. I mean, three years ago, we probably were saying something different, like get really good at one platform. Now it's like, well, you might as well post it there. Like, why not? Like, why wouldn't you? And I think too, because so like yesterday, um, I, I, I don't want to get into too much detail, but um, I received an email from somebody who I sort of help on the side and they were like auditing the account. Right. And they were saying like our Instagram um, based on like statistics, our Instagram engagement should be between one and 5%. And like in May 2023, I am not seeing that on anybody's account. Like, it made me really start to look at, like, I was looking at your engagement. I was looking at Rachel Peterson's engagement. I'm looking at 
Gary V's engagement. Like there are literally accounts on Gary V or Vayner Media that have 88 likes and that account has millions of followers. And it's just like the reach that we used to be able to get on Instagram. Like I, you know, like we know Facebook doesn't give us much and like we are okay with like, we'll put $5 a day behind some posts just to get reach because we understand that that's the only way. But like Mm -hmm. Instagram really used to at least give us something every once in a while. And I feel like that is not even the case for like 90% of the time. I literally put posts out that get like zero engagement and that just never used to happen. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm just trying to like gear up again my account because like I said, I've been busy. No, and I'm not saying anything bad about your account. I'm saying I looked at accounts with over 2,000 followers and accounts with over 100,000 followers. Yeah, I was just saying, I don't know my account's like that because that's like the theme that's going on. It's It is. It is the theme. That's the point. Like Rachel had posts with 14 likes on them, you know, and it's like, And it's not to say that her content is bad or that your content is bad. To me, looking at your account, like that's exactly what an Instagram account should look like. Like you're following what's working on the platform right now. And when I bring up like Gary Vee and Rachel, like these are two big marketing experts in our social media industry. Like if you want to learn social media, these are people that you're looking to learn it from and they still are struggling with reach and engagement on Instagram. Like I personally think, and I'm just like, maybe I'm just trying to make myself feel better because I'm being told that my Instagram engagement sucks. Right. But it's like, I'm looking at everyone else's account and I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing eight comments on accounts that have hundreds of thousands of followers, whereas they should have you know, 50 to a hundred comments on it. If this was six months ago or a year ago, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there are people on Instagram getting great reach and great whatever, but it's almost like they're sharing how to grow an Instagram specific content. So it's like, you think so? Or like a trending audio. Oh, use this. So then that video will be whatever. So there's a lot of that going on as well. Yeah. Um, I just try to, like, obviously, I have to pay attention to the numbers and stuff like that. I was just did month end reports for my clients. For the most part, we had great stat. I had great stats to report on. But I just try to make sure that on Instagram, I'm sharing content that if someone lands on my profile, they can like get a vibe for like, what I do, yeah. what my voice sounds like how they can work with me results I get for my clients and just try to like, stay in that lane a little bit because yeah, there's so much beyond our control now that we just can't do anything about Well, and I really think that that's a good way to look at Instagram, which is how we used to look at Facebook. And I think Facebook is still important because people search on Facebook. But I think that um, making sure that Instagram tells a story when somebody does find you. And honestly, like when I post reels, you know how it like shows you um, videos that you know what I mean? Like when you're like posting something it like bring, it just like brings up the discover page or whatever. Yeah. It's always just like post this, uh, post this sound, post this sound. I'm like, is this all that reels is? Or do they just like know that I do social media and that's what they show me? I personally don't scroll on reels in the reels that people send me in the group chat of reels that, you know, like in my Instagram group chat and my friends that send me reels, they're sending me things that I've seen on TikTok. And that's not even a joke. Like they're sending me TikToks like- from six months ago like it's for real I'm like the the reels that are being shared are actually TikTok so I feel like um because like I'm on my clients accounts all the time and I feel like I'm just constantly served aesthetic videos with quick edits and text on the screen yeah like b-roll with tips I feel like that's pretty much like all I'm served besides a few other marketing people um that I follow that are like me and want pushing people to use their voice. But when I'm on my clients' accounts, like that's the vibe I get from Reels lately. So it's like, I don't know. Try yeah. audio alerts and vibey aesthetic seven second clipped videos. That seems well, to be and what's I'm going glad on. that I'm glad that Instagram found its way, right? That Reels did turn into something that was specific to Instagram for their sake. But yes. Okay. So what we kind of talked a lot about this. What I'm really curious about is like what, um, so Instagram, like engagement followers, um, 
and ultimately sales is what people really want. But like, what are you seeing that's working for your clients and for yourself that's getting engagement consistently on Instagram and on TikTok? Yeah, I would say on Instagram, like carousels are kind of doing good again. So I've been trying to do like one carousel a week. Um, And like those quick edit reels, um, vlog style videos are doing good. So I'm always a huge pusher (laughs) on trying to share like an array of content because it's like our audience might not want to just see videos 24 seven. So for my clients, I typically like to do like a photo, a carousel and some reels. So that's usually like the content format vibe that I go with there. Um, Yeah, I would say storytelling is obviously like a huge one. Every platform you're going to post on. When it comes to TikTok, I also don't know if I'm just served marketing land TikToks. But yeah. I basically see mainly people using their voice. Yeah. And cap cut templates. <laughs> That's like what cap I get cut, served. Right. <laughs> and I like know. I have one client who um, I do TikTok scripts for and like analyze her account. So I have access to her account when I'm scrolling on hers. I had just, I don't really see any cap cut templates. So I think it's just my account really? and I see a lot of talking <laughs> videos. So I feel like talking, using your voice on TikTok is what does well. Uh, the vlog with a voiceover, those ones do really good, especially for yeah. brands and like brands, like product-based businesses. I think that that's like the best videos that you can create, like share video clips of you packing orders, picking your stuff up choosing like a new fabric swatch and then do a voiceover of it. I feel like that for product-based businesses is like the best video they can create on TikTok. Yeah, you're so right. That's a great idea. I don't work with a lot of product-based businesses, but anytime I've done a voiceover, um, those have done well. And I, do you have that feature yet where you can um, arrange by popular videos on your account? I don't think so. What does that mean? It is so cool on TikTok. I just, I made a TikTok about it yesterday. Um, So after this, you can go watch so you know exactly what I'm saying, but I'll explain it to you. Like from your profile page on the left side where you would normally click to like get just to your videos, there's an arrow down and you can um, make it say between, like from the latest videos or the most popular. And what's Mm. cool and like, they're not just going off of views. I think they're going off of, maybe like views and engagement because they, they are like my higher viewed videos, but there's, they're not in order from views. And so I think it takes into account the engagement that you get, but the videos of mine that have performed the best, like from my account history are the storytelling ones, like the ones where I'm just telling my story. So that's definitely um, the case. And then I went on to Rachel's, like I was looking, so it's really cool. Cause you can, um, to get video content ideas, right? Like a lot of times oh, I'll, nice. I'll just, go to discover and filter um it because the other thing is is that all the videos that i from all the accounts i was looking at there were all old videos because tiktok doesn't give us the same reach and um it will reach that it used to and so uh like rachel's video her number one was like 8.5 million views but it's from like a year ago so even her most engaged videos now. So anyways, I say that to say, like, if you're using other accounts for research, take into consideration what's working in the last three months, not what's working in the last account health, but it's still really good. And they're all, their storytelling is always like the best one. So that's a really good point. And like analogies, those do really well. You know, when people can like incorporate an analogy, I'm never really good at figuring those out, but I keep saying I'm going to brain dump a bunch and use them, but I never do. But chat GPT you can use to help create analogies for you. So what do you mean by that? What is an analogy? <sighs> now you're putting me on the spot. Just give me like... an example. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I just need to like think about it. But yeah, I don't know. An analogy is like when you're describing something else about something else. I was like, oh, so is it like when you bring a story into like when you're trying to make a point and you bring a story into it? Would it be like that? But like it's not necessarily related to like what you're teaching on. Like, oh, you know, when you go into a store and blah, blah, blah. You know how people are so good at that kind of stuff. That's like really good storytelling. So, yeah, I feel like there's some people that are so good at me. I'm just like, huh? But I did see a video of someone that created 
um, that you can go into chat GPT and it says, give me an analogy about someone who's just starting a business and might feel oh, stressed. So good. You know what I mean? So like yeah. you could kind of like go into there to give you a prompt. Again, I keep needing to do it. I just haven't done it yet. But I think that that's like a good way to get some storytelling ideas. Okay, I'm going to go off about that for just a second. So um, you know how like we teach people in their marketing, like you need your unique, um, what makes you unique, right? Um, and so one of my clients, his unique thing or whatever is that he's like a ping pong champion, right? Like whatever, that's what he says yeah. about himself. So, and he teaches yeah. sales leadership. So I went to Chad GPT and I, and he also likes to surf. And I asked Chad GPT, like, how is ping pong like sales leadership and it gave me like 10 things that I can use so we totally use that in his content which people love because they're like oh yeah like when we play ping pong or whatever and so you're totally right chat GPT does work and that's perfect because it um it, that's a great way to create content is by sharing something that other people might find relatable and relating it back to your content I thought yeah, maybe you were like talking using about AI like, in a way that will will in turn be in your words because what yeah. are the chances someone else might type in there what does ping pong have to do with you know what i mean like if you can be specific on what you're typing in it's like guaranteed no one else is going to have that output yeah that's so good i love that i'm going to do that when we get off of here <laughs> okay, okay so my list. i just haven't got my act together um, another thing that I've seen just, and we're almost out of time. So this will be the last thing that I ask, but, um, like, so follower growth has become really stale on, I mean, Instagram, like I swear Instagram's like, you got a new follower and then you like lose the follower the same day. So I don't even, I don't even think they're real people, but, um, I, <laughs> I've been talking bad about Instagram. They're probably listening. Well, I don't know what, um, but, um... One of my clients does, two of my clients actually do a lot of in-person events. Oh, that's and great. I would say that's really how they've been growing their accounts. I love that. Like you know what? ideal clients. I do that at networking things. Like people are like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do social media. They're like, do you have a card? I'm like, no, but let's connect like on Instagram or well, and on I, like Instagram, that better. No, I actually just I just noticed this yesterday when I was on my strategy call with my client on Instagram now, underneath your profile it says share profile. And you, you oh, can cool. just click on there and then a QR code comes up. I'll have to look at that. But I like that better anyways, because like it, I'm, I don't do anything with those cards, you know? It's like, okay, thanks. But when you follow somebody on Instagram, if they actually are posting, then you get to mm -hmm. see who they are, what they do. Like, you actually get to learn more about them. And it, yeah. that's, I feel like that's way more impactful than just taking someone's card. Totally. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, on TikTok, I don't know. Like, I always, I mean, I've started a few different accounts for myself. Yeah, I was going to ask started, about like, your other media. one. Like I'm a social media manager, let's create some whatever content just to like mix it up. Sometimes I yeah. wonder with my account, like it kind of feels like even my views, like I seem to just be at like, like I can't seem to like propel forward to get like yeah. a lot of views. And I'm like, is it because I started my account so long ago that I have so many followers that are just? I think that that's day. my problem. I think, you know, I started my account in 2020 or 2021 and I feel like TikTok's like, I don't know what to do with you anymore. Like, <laughs> just sit over here. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you know, people are like, oh, make sure your video has good SEO. And it's like, oh, look at my videos. I'm like, oh, it says social media marketing in the search bar. So it's like, I know that I'm like using my keywords and doing that. And same with one of my other clients. She's hired me on to create scripts for her and just kind of like analyze her account, like almost be her accountability like yeah, TikTok yeah coach and yeah she's like I just feel like I was at like a, this amount of followers and just like it won't and like slowly we're like inching like one by one and like her videos are super amazing like she's giving like solid sales and marketing tips because she's a <laughs> lead generation sales coach and I'm just like your videos are gold so yeah that's what we should have on every other platform um, so I just got a question about what are we chatting about today? Today we're chatting about social media. We've been talking about Instagram and TikTok and our live is actually almost coming to an end, but you can catch all of the replays on YouTube. I have them on my YouTube channel at Key Heart Marketing, um, which is the same as my TikTok handle. Um, so my last two questions before we go, the first one is what 
piece of content are you consuming right now that you absolutely love? Like whether it's a podcast, a book, a TV show, something like that, that it, it could be inspirational or just something that's been really fun for you. Um, I mean, I'm always all about reality TV. So I'm like, all Me too. Up my I've been watching drama. your Vanderpump stories. <laughs> that's yeah, what, so my... I would say that. Yeah, I love uh, dude, I started I watching season out. one over again, Pardon? just to like, see where they started. Oh, yeah. We did that during the pandemic. So we're like, are we ready to rewatch it again? Because I've already Yeah, no, you are. You are. Time. Like, season one, you have to rewatch again. I know. Especially like, right yeah, now. I, I watched it in real time. We rewatched it during the pandemic. Yeah. And then now. But uh, last night, I was looking at everyone's uh, Met Gala looks, because Ooh. I wanted to maybe create some like meme style content. Exactly. So I mean, that that is one thing that um, is really great on Instagram and fun to create yeah. is staying on top of like pulp culture events that are happening and then kind of creating some like meme content. So that's a good way to kind of like boost engagement as well. I know that was a tangent. I love that. No, that's great. And you know what? I did a video yesterday about Wendy's marketing strategy or Wendy's social media strategy. I don't know if you've seen that. Like Wendy's the food place? Wendy's the restaurant. It is so good. They... Well, you know, first of all, it's good when a big brand lets their social media person become unhinged. And that's what this is. And it's like their Facebook, they pretend to be like a boomer, like that has no idea what's going on. All oh of their Facebook God, posts so are funny. like, yeah, they're like misspelled. And they're like, what is this anyways? Did I get hacked? Whatever. And then their Instagram is like the starter pack, whatever. They're like those, you know, like those type of emoji thing. Or um, I called it an emoji I don't know, but they do, or like your Wendy's order based on your horoscope, like all these things that are just like very much Instagram. Instagram. And so that's yeah. a good place to look. Oh my God. I'm going to look at all this stuff. I know there's like actually a look, I keep meaning to do a video on this. Sorry, I know we're almost done. I keep meaning to do a video on this, but there's a restaurant like local to my city and their TikTok is just the best. And maybe it's because I used to serve. So I just get like all yeah. the humor, but I love when restaurants just not restaurants. I love when businesses play into the platform. That's how you're supposed to do it. Exactly. Like Duolingo started it. Like Duolingo started it. Like they got it. And it's like, when you have to, when you care more about like your branding versus what's going to work on the platform, it will just never work completely. It won't work as well as it could because you don't leave any room for trying new things. So I always love when someone comes out on top, like Wendy's right now doing crazy unhinged things um okay so last question where can people find you like what do you have going on is your uh, membership open right now tell us like what what how people can work with you um yeah so my handle is social and stuff across everywhere um i have been really focused on building my management business so that's kind of been like my main focus and being able to give more work to my team member and that kind of stuff. So yes, I still have my membership, but I'm planning to kind of relaunch it soon, but I've been super focused on my social media management business and kind of building that up. So I would say that's, that's my main jam at the moment. Perfect. And what kind of clients are you looking for right now? Uh, I typically work with like service based for the most part, like coaches and I'm just starting to work with like an educational book company in June, which is like super cool, the Canada one and the US account. So that's going to be kind of like a little product based one that I can get into. Um, I work with mortgage brokers, real estate agents. So yeah, mainly kind of like service based, but um, I do have a couple product based in there. One of my first clients is like a local clothing boutique. That's why I know that those boutiques are hard. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. All right. So um, thank you so much, Sarah. And remember, you can watch us live every Tuesday. I do social media for your boring business with amazing digital marketers that I know. And you can always catch a replay on YouTube. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.